Here is the new A-frame cabin from LEGO Ideas, an insanely detailed model that was super satisfying to put together, but a bit on the controversial side of things, due to significant changes when compared to the original fan submission on the LEGO Ideas platform. More on that later on. But looking at the model, I gotta say it looks stunning. It has such a unique style to it that really shows what the LEGO system has to offer. What's also stunning is the artwork for the building instructions. There's this cute daylight scene in one of the books and a nighttime scene in the second. A similar care was seen before with the covers of the Jazz Quartet set building instructions, also from LEGO Ideas, so hopefully we'll get to see a lot more of this in upcoming releases. The fact that the building instructions are split into two books means that this is a great build to share with someone else which I feel is always great to have, but now onto the model itself. For starters, let's look at the side builds which actually come off the main build. The cross axle connectors make it so that the side builds are always loose, probably to avoid the model breaking if you were to lift the whole thing in one go. The smallest of the two has a wood storage space with different sizes of logs to chop down and an autumn shaded tree with lots of different foliage elements with the red leaves being a new recolor exclusive to this set. You'll also find some wildlife, a blue bird up the tree and a butterfly which while not being a new element seems to be the first time it's been printed. The second side build is significantly bigger, with bigger trees as well, designed in the same way as the previous one, but featuring different color schemes, a yellow and a green one, on top of which we can find the red bird. There's also a different print to the butterfly element down here, a cute otter and a frog by the simple creek build. It will be hard to miss the canoe that stays in place with the supports, and under it we find some vests in a crate and the pedals by the barrel here. The base is a bit all over the place with different kinds of shapes and colors which I don't love, but the mushrooms were a nice touch and a rock element built sideways for some cool stone texture on the ground was an interesting building technique. Pretty sure this isn't random at all, the two sections can be connected like this for a small mini forest scene if you want to have this detached from the cabin, which I thought was very neat. Imagine having this as a gift with purchase set, insane value. Now the set is all about the cabin and as I said before I find it absolutely stunning. Right from the start a frog is hidden under the stairs that lead to the house. A few more mushrooms and a squirrel. The cobblestone work is amazing because it uses a bunch of Thor's Mjolnir pieces as the stones in a staggered way. Talk about nice part usage. It's also worth mentioning that the first few steps of the set also have us building a secret Italian flag, a cool easter egg that references the nationality of the fan designer of the set. On the porch, a rocking chair with a whip element was a clever detail, an egg being fried here and another small bench to the other side. There's two more butterflies, same prints as the ones previously highlighted, and a small birdhouse next to one of the windows that features the dark green color with printed wooden plank pieces above it. Something that can be seen on all windows of the cabin, like the ones on the sides of the roof. There's a ton of tiles used here for a nice effect, though I think the model would have benefited with the use of at least an extra color for some variation. There isn't a lack of detail on the back as well, with maybe a gas tank and a petrol container, judging by the octane color scheme. To the left, a shower with a pink soap, I think, and a door element for a towel. Or is it toilet paper next to a shovel? The combination kinda makes sense in the woods, if you know what I mean. There's also a chimney that goes all the way up and I would also like to highlight the texturing of the wall. It is very interesting with the use of different pieces, but there's also a lot of different layers of depth here with full plates of difference, but also half plates of difference. Achieved with a mix of modified bricks and brackets on the layers underneath breaking an otherwise flat surface really well. I do feel the same as the roofs though, the walls could have benefited with the use of a few more colors. Both sides of the roof can be removed like so, and they're actually only resting here relying on gravity to stay in place, which is great for ease of access to the interior, but could be bad as they might fall when you move the model around. Mine however don't line up perfectly as they do in the box art, as there's this small gap here at the top. Not a real issue, but something I wanted to mention nonetheless. 
there's a ton of interior details, a bit too much for my taste, but I have to agree that it kinda resembles what you would expect to see in these kinds of places. Starting from the top, there's a bedroom with lots of objects laying around. I'll have to highlight the painting above the bed, an image of a custom build by the fan designer of the set, cool little easter egg in there, a miniature Lego Ideas Treehouse reference and a hidden nut that the squirrel placed under the bed. He isn't the only creature that has been inside though. The old top floor can be removed for easier access on the ground floor and I like how the chimney outside was broken but still matches the lower section when in place. This floor has an even crazier amount of details that are really fun to put together, like the desk with a typewriter here, maybe a reference to yet another Lego idea set, the wooden stove in there is very neat, the exhaust here was made with a car spoiler element on its side, or the sink's faucet made with the flintlock piece. In the couch area there's a collection of vinyl discs, a record player and a collection of minerals as well. As you've probably noticed by now, there's no stickers in the set. Everything is printed, including the entrance mat with the Lego print, an element only seen once before in the red pickup truck set, and above the door a tile that up until now was exclusive to the Lego Ideas blacksmith set. Priced at $180 with little over 2000 pieces, without stickers, a great building experience, fun details and an amazing looking model when put together, I think this set offers a lot of value and I haven't even covered the 4 minifigures, all featuring appropriate clothing for the setting where the action plays out. It's kinda following on the footsteps of the customizable minifigures like the football table set pushed so hard to do. Because if we look at the back of the box and take this minifigure as an example, in this picture she is seen with a different airpiece, in this one different clothes, and here at the top a different airpiece once again. Either that or someone failed really hard with these pictures. It does trouble me how these four people will sleep with the cabin only having a double bed upstairs though. Maybe they'll share the woods with all of the different animals that this set has to offer. As I've said before, this set seems to be getting some criticism due to a few changes when we compare the final model to the initial fan designer submission on the LEGO Ideas platform. The trees are the most obvious changes which understandably can make some people less happy. But the original ones also seem incredibly difficult to build strongly enough for LEGO's quality standards, so taking the designer's side here I can understand if the changes were made due to stability. There's also the overall look of the model, the original looked way more dated, whereas the final model looks a bit more modern looking. Personally I don't mind the changes all that much and the model still looks amazing to be honest. But to clear things up and discuss the set in a little more detail, I will have access to an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the LEGO designers of this model. So if there's anything you'd like me to ask them about the model, write it down below in the comment section and subscribe so you don't miss that video that will be coming out real soon. BTS armies will finally be able to get their hands on the LEGO Ideas BTS Dynamite set. This product is based off of the Dynamite Music Video, a single from the Korean boy band BTS, arguably one of the most popular and iconic music groups in the world at the moment. No wonder that LEGO Ideas decided to turn the 10,000 volt project into a LEGO set. The Dynamite Music Video on YouTube has over 1.6 billion views and BTS fans are hundreds of thousands across the globe. And the main reason are these 7 guys here, made in minifigure form with all new torso prints and a bunch of other new face prints and air pieces. The group wear several outfits throughout the video, but the LEGO design team went for these ones in specific. First minifigure is RM, leader and spokesperson of the group, with a great looking star print shirt, his iconic blue hair and the cool winking eye with glasses alternate expression. Next we have worldwide Anson Jean with his cool polka dot shirt and a more serious alternate expression there. Suga's outfit isn't as flashy as the previous two but still cool with also a secondary expression. He's our hope, we're his hope, here's J-Hope with a great looking red shirt with hanging glasses there, very happy regardless of the expression you choose to go for. Jimin has his green jacket, though I guess LEGO didn't manage to get Gucci in on this deal and the logo was removed if we compare this to the original outfit, also happy secondary expression. V has one of the coolest outfits I think, with his emerald green suit and a cheeky blinking eye secondary expression going on. 
Last but not least, Jungkook with his cool vintage jacket and we can even see the silver thingy coming out of the jacket's pocket and a somewhat surprised secondary expression, probably the one from the donut chop scene. The level of detail on the minifigures is really good, but only from the torso up, because as you can see, none of the leg elements is printed. Going into the main build, I'll jump straight into the black stage build. The box of the set points out this gear that you're supposed to spin, and as it turns out, moving it makes the group dance in sync, which is such a neat play feature. The way it works is rather simple, just making use of interconnected gears at the bottom. There's also a reflective sticker with the BTS logo here at the front, and besides the printed minifigures, every other detail you will see here are stickers, which this set has about 30 of, spread across 4 different sticker sheets. Hopefully you'll place them slightly better than LEGO did on this photo here. Now this is what the main model looks like, a collection of the different locations of the music video, built together in a single display piece that references remarkably well most of the details you'd expect to see. Starting on the right, a mini version of the basketball field, with a huge sticker there that matches the graffiti of the music video quite well. Next there's the record shop with a few more stickers capturing the shop sign and some of the text written in the windows to great level of detail. Now inside is where there's a lot of fan service. By the window you can already see the BTS album B, where the single Dynamite was included, and a cool record player build to listen to your discs. From the back we can have a better look at the record displays in the middle of the store and on the walls, with the ones in the middle featuring 4 copies of the Dynamite cover. To the left we see map of Soul 7 and Wings, and on the other side of the store Love Yourself, Her and Map of Soul Persona. So in total you get 9 BTS albums, which I'm sure the fans of the group who get these will be very happy about. Below the albums of the walls there's just some random printed tiles to fill up the space. Moving to the middle here we get to see the disco entrance, with a brick built sign, and what I really like about this set is how accurate to the music video it is, since the designers also nailed the AC unit, the parking ticket machine or the yellow fire hydrant, just like in the music video. The only thing that feels off is the choice of color for the entrance door. It's sand green, but maybe a sand blue or dark blue one would have been more accurate. On the back the disco is a bit plain in my eyes, with a few spotlights up here and two speakers. This is the one place of the set that doesn't look like the music video at all. On the back there's these window panes with reflective stickers on top, which give it a nice effect depending on where the light gets it, and you'll notice some lego studs here to which you can attach the stage build. You remove the speakers and place them to the front and you have yourself a nice dancing disco scene. The last location is the iconic donut shop. There's a few stickers on the windows outside and you can't really miss the giant donut build up top. It's built on top of a turntable element so you can spin it around. There's also this extra build of the donut shop sign which again copies the music video version remarkably well. It's just missing some of the tilted angles and the open sign printed on top of the arrow here. Inside there's a seat by the window, the train rack build and on the other side of the door there's the ketchup and mustard dispensers if you choose something other than donuts from the menu up here. There's also the coffee machine and a freezer that gets me really excited as a LEGO fan because it's a new set of elements, a tall container piece with shelves inside and a glass door element to fit it. Outside there's also two loose palm trees that we see spread out across the music video, two traffic cones and the iconic ice cream van. The dropped ice cream on top is a cool brick built object just missing the sprinkles of the music video, and it was made with a neat combination of a pink dome element and these weird pieces for the melting down effect. There's the dynamite sticker on this side here and to the other a container element with ice cream inside. To the back a window and down here a license plate with a few letters and numbers, probably a reference to the fan designers of the model. They're featured on the instruction booklet as is often the case with these sets, as are the LEGO designers in charge of making the model. There's also a few pages talking about BTS and the dynamite music video and the covers have some cool illustrations to it as well. When you're done building with the set you'll notice all of these spare pieces, but fear not, it's not a mistake, that's a thing LEGO usually does so you don't miss any of the tiny pieces, but the cool thing about it is all of the extra microphones. 
Now here's the thing guys, to most LEGO fans this set will be meaningless. It's poorly priced at $100 for just 750 pieces and people would have liked LEGO ideas to pick something else to design. But don't forget that there are a ton of LEGO idea sets in development at the moment and with this set in specific, LEGO is trying to reach the millions of followers BTS has all over the world that probably haven't touched a LEGO set in years. In a lot of ways LEGO ideas should probably do more of these sets and less of these so-called regular kinds of sets, looking at it from a strategical point of view in which they're trying to reach new audiences. I also think it's brilliant how the fan designers of the set act the platform, making the bare minimum they could possibly do to convey this set idea to a platform that's literally called LEGO IDEAS, not beautiful designed LEGO models that will be changed in the final design anyways, reached out to the BTS fandom who did share their work and got the 10,000 required votes to get the project to the eyes of LEGO in just a matter of days. Something most projects on LEGO Ideas platform do really struggle to do over the time span of weeks, months and sometimes even years. At the end of the day, do I like the set? I do not. The build is rather simple with no awesome building techniques, pricing is terrible and even though I have listened to a lot of BTS music to prepare for this review, I don't feel the need to have a LEGO set of the band. Now, do I think that LEGO should be doing this set? Absolutely. This isn't a set for LEGO fans, this is a LEGO set for BTS fans. LEGO will potentially reach millions of people with this product and truth be told, the model actually looks great with all of the cool color choices, super accurate details when compared to the music video, extremely detailed minifigures and the dancing stage was a surprising neat feature. Hope the BTS army doesn't murder my channel, this is a good LEGO set that does its job very well at the end of the day and I'm sure BTS fans will absolutely love it. Me personally, not so much. Postcards aren't something new for LEGO, but done this beautifully, it's a first for sure. The LEGO Ideas Tales of the Space Age is both simple and brilliant and I honestly can't praise it enough. But before all that, inside the box we find 5 different booklets with amazing art on the covers, something that isn't new to LEGO Ideas sets. The first has a bit of info on the origin of the set, individual names and background story for each of the postcards and a few words from the fan designer. The remaining 4 booklets all have instructions for their respective builds, so this is a great set to build with someone else if you're into that. The style for all of the builds is quite similar, built on top of a 4x12 studs base with some sort of foreground detail, a 2 bricks deep background with black and a few shades of a specific color group that look like sunsets on different planets and some sort of brick built detail in the sky. The first, named Cool Cosmic Travelers, is all about comets that were represented here with clever part choices. I love the use of the Harry Potter wand elements in white for the debris of the main comet, whose tail was built with this weird tail slash claw element. At the foreground of this planet there's some dishes, so maybe to represent deep space research observatories. Intergalactic Road Trips is all about the use of space vehicles in the aid of space exploration, so there's this micro rover in the foreground of what I like to imagine being the planet Mars, given the orange color spectrum of the background, and on the sky the silhouettes of two moons done with offset rounded elements to great effect. Out of this world is the name of the third postcard and the space rocket launching into space, leaving behind all of this smoke made with different sized round elements is brilliant. Simple, but brilliant. It's probably the first time I don't mind the use of the Lego coral colored bricks and in the sky you'll notice a constellation done with a new printed 1x1 flat tile. Now if you're into space and stargazing at all, you'll notice that the pattern of the stars here represents the Ursa Major constellation, which is an awesome reference. The cool thing about this postcard is that there are instructions and extra pieces for you to choose to build 3 other constellations, Cassiopeia, Cepheus or Ursa Minor. The last postcard named Into the Unknown depicts a modern representation of a black hole and while not being my favorite has a cool mix of colors for the planet's surface and black elements on the foreground to maybe represent the silhouette of mountains in the distance. 
These are incredible little pieces of art, featuring a bit of a retro style to them, but that go so perfectly together and are a brilliant, neat little display piece. They can rest on a shelf like so, they can be hanged on a wall due to having the special LEGO art sets element in the back, they can be placed on their own or using the included extra pins on these Technic brick holes to the sides of the postcards to combine them all together. Personally, I like them a lot more when they're separate from each other. The builds were pretty much identical at their core, but not necessarily boring, and the different foregrounds and details on the sky made them interesting builds to put together. Also very satisfying, because it's becoming increasingly rare that you build LEGO sets with mostly regular bricks and plates, which this set have a ton of. The price on these will probably surprise you, the set has 688 pieces and will only cost $50. That's a steal in my opinion and makes it that much more desirable. I'm very very happy that LEGO is finally understanding that there's a lot of potential in the $100 or less price range of products aimed at adults. LEGO Ideas in particular has had a lot of success with the ship in a bottle in the past, having retired the set and bringing it back for a second run. The Saturn V was initially priced at $100 when it first came out, but after a while got its price bumped up and it also came back for a second run. The Star Wars dioramas and helmets, the Jurassic Park diorama or the Tallneck that was constantly out of stock on the first few months after release are some great examples of how affordable LEGO sets can make a stand and probably outperform the ridiculous oversized releases of recent years. Tales of the Space Age is even cheaper than all of those, makes for a perfect display piece of art, a true LEGO building experience with lots of bricks that can be built together with other people, and makes for a perfect gift that I'll probably be handing out myself a couple copies of to friends and family. I'm very much into space, I wanted to be an astronaut as a kid so I could be a little biased in regards to this one, but if it wasn't clear already, I like it a lot. On May the 8th, go buy a few using the links below to show some support. A small step for you, a giant leap for this channel for sure. Oh my god, that's so cringy, sorry. <laughs> The latest set from LEGO Ideas is Hocus Pocus, the Sanderson Sisters Cottage, something I had never heard about prior to this LEGO set. Apparently it's based off of a very popular Halloween comedy fantasy movie that I did watch to properly prepare for this review, so here goes nothing. The set comes with 6 minifigures, with 3 of them being the 3 witch sisters, Winifred, Sarah and Mary. Very colorful outfits matching the movie references quite well, with capes in the back and they all have alternate expressions. The other three are Max, his sister Danny and Allison with a jar of salt, reference to the movie. Out of these three Danny is the coolest, with her witch outfit with cool prints front and back and a printed dual molded hat element. There's actually three more minifigs, kinda, in the form of three skeletons. And finally Takari Binks in his cat form. He left a trail of paw footprints by the gate, a side build of the set. It's a three-sided fence with a gate in the middle, closed sticker and two more with an S that stands for Sanderson most likely. To the left there's the remnants of a tree and to the right three gravestones. Amber White in this one is a reference to the fan designer who submitted the idea to the LEGO Ideas website. William Billy Butcherson, a reference to the zombie from the movie and Emily Binks on the last one, Thackeray Binks's sister, the seized by the hands of the Sanderson sisters as seen in the movie. You do get the eerie feeling with this small build, but it doesn't come close to the Halloween vibes the cottage gives, right? Lots of dry plants and growing vines surrounding the base of the house, especially in this right wall here where there's a water wheel that can be spun. The crooked wooden planks in the front facing roof wall help keep the spooky aesthetic and so do the completely worn down roofs. Originally dark grey it seems, though lots of tiles have fallen down revealing the dark brown color underneath, where a few leaves are also starting to settle in. The walls of the house do feel like they're in very good shape though. 
In the movie the cottage was turned into a museum, as seen in this sticker here by the entrance. Two more stickers for the entrance door by the way, but it's inside that the museum feel of the set is more prevalent. There's lots of ways we can peek inside. On the back there's two walls that can be opened, up on the roof this entire roof plate is also on hinges, and down here this small room of sorts can be disconnected from the main build, so I guess I'll start here. Inside there's a chair and I'll remove it so we can better see the fireplace in the back. Being a museum there will be a few displays inside like this one and I absolutely love the slightly rare hourglass element. Back to the main build I do need to say that the space is super tight and filled to the brim with detail so I'll try my best to properly show everything. The spider web is easy to see as it is and so are these two cages with skeletons inside. The build does bother me as most of the bars aren't connected, so I need to be constantly adjusting these so that the cages look straight. A few more of these clips would have solved the issue, so aside from budgeting, I see no reason why that wasn't done. In here there's a display with the manual of witchcraft and alchemy, with a do not touch sign and the cover as stickers, while the tile inside with the spell that turned Binks into a cat is a printed tile. The black flame candle is also on display with an info sticker sheet, but the candle itself is also printed. But what's exciting to me is that the candle flame is made with that new transparent Lego color that I've only seen before in the Star Wars Snub Fighter set canopy. In the middle of the ground floor there's a cauldron with a potion brewing made with lime green ice cream elements and we can actually lit the fire pit underneath since there's a light brick in there. There's a bunch of different displays on the ground floor with seemingly random items for sale as part of the museum space, and upstairs a bed with three different patterns of colors, one for each of the Sanderson sisters. To the side a broom Winifred used to fly, though Sarah had to settle for a mop and Mary had to use a vacuum cleaner. Cool details referencing the movie. The last thing I want to highlight is this Technic gear here. Turning it makes this mechanism work and if we go outside we'll see it linked to the water wheel, that in turn makes the smoke up the chimney go up and down. Interesting piece usage, the monkey Keith cloud pieces made transparent pink with this opalescence effect to it. Prior to making this review I've never heard of Ocus Pocus so I was a bit on the fence about the model. But that got me thinking about the Home Alone set from two years ago, also inspired in a family friendly seasonal movie that to me made total sense back then, and so Ocus Pocus in that regard feels totally justified as a product. Regardless of the source material, the build itself was great, the finished model is the best proper Halloween themed Lego set we've had recently, with the last one being the Haunted House that's three years old now and should be retiring soon, and the cottage could be easily modified to fit a medieval style build as well. For that reason this set will probably appeal to Ocus Pocus fans first and foremost, Halloween fans and medieval custom builders. Price per piece value is on that 10 cents a piece sweet spot with the 2300 pieces and a retail price of $230. All in all this one positively surprised me, but I'm kinda curious to know what do you all feel about it. If you enjoyed this LEGO set review be sure to watch this video next. The Disney Castle review will be up on the channel very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Fellow YouTuber Ashiroku24's idea submission became a much different LEGO set, the LEGO Ideas Insect Collection. Now were the changes justified? Did people really get what they voted for? Let's find out. If nothing else the insets got upgrades in the form of three display bases, each of them having distinct shapes and flora. This makes it way easier to showcase the insects that would otherwise be harder to display on their own, though my initial thoughts when building the set were that more than half of the pieces of this product weren't actually used to build the things that gave this set its name, the insects. 
My point being the set could have been off the price. I'll discuss price later, but truth be told, the display bases do look nice and if you're a fan of botanical sets, here's a few extra items for your Lego plant collection. All of these were actually great to build, with nice studs not on top techniques and clever piece usage for some angles. The beetle base also showcases some sort of mushrooms and under it there's some sort of cocoons, represented with the white croissant elements. The Chinese mantis display also stays at an angle and has a bunch of leaves coming out of it, including a new one I've never seen before. This is where we kinda find our first insect in the form of an exclusive printed one by one round tile for the ladybug. The initial project submission had a brick built ladybug, so the tile is clearly a downgrade, though on the other hand, this makes it so that all of the five insects included in the set are properly scaled amongst themselves. The butterfly base has some brick built flowers going on, made with interesting piece choices, on top of which we find insect number 2, the bee. Another victim of the downscaling process the set went through, but again in favor of realistic scale which I can get behind. And I gotta highlight the transparent bent bar to which the insect is connected, as well as the minifigure fairy wings element recolored in transparent and an egg element with an exclusive print for the abdomen. But now the real insects come in. The Hercules beetle is my least favorite of the big three, but it is represented quite well regardless of my taste for it, especially in the horn area with the use of several different specialized elements. Its translucent wings were replicated with the use of a bunch of transparent orange pieces to a decent result and they can somewhat be adjusted due to the way they are connected with the body, same thing with the shell. There's also the option of removing the wings and closing the shell for a different display pose and I think I actually prefer this one over the open wings version, but I'm curious to know your takes on it. It. The blue morpho butterfly is a simpler build with not that many specialized elements but still great in its own right. The way the top part of the wing sits at an angle is great, the gradient of shades of blue is on point and at the tip of the wings we have exclusive 2x2 corner tiles for some decoration. Kinda feel like picking different colored lego pieces and make different butterflies based off of this one. Finally the Chinese mantis is the last insect of the collection, probably my favorite due to really liking lime green colored bricks. This one is a massive win in regards to nice parts usage. The feet were made with sand green lego minifigure revolver elements, the antennas are golden crowbar pieces and the claws are probably some lego ninjago blades of some sort. Despite not holding himself quite well, is the more poseable insect of the collection, having many movable joints for you to display it the way you see feet and notice the printed eye elements as well. Each of the insects has its own instruction booklet, so this is one of those great sets to build with someone else. And there's a fourth book that highlights my boy Ashiroku, facts about the set, the insects and the Lego designers themselves. The final set turned out to be quite different from what people voted for initially, but the inclusion of the display bases makes total sense for stability and displayability value and while the bee and the ladybug were downscaled and play a secondary role in the product, those changes made all insects stay in scale to one another, which I think was a smart decision. The price for the product, while not being as impressive as the one for the Viking village, is still better than most LEGO releases these days, with over 1100 pieces for the price of $80, so you really can't go wrong with this one. Links to purchase it online are in the description if you wish to support the channel. Now I have a bunch of other reviews to prepare for you guys, so while you wait for them, remember the Viking village, the one with the impressive price? It really is mind-blowing how LEGO did all of that for so little, and if you don't believe me, watch that video here while you subscribe and wait for the Concord review coming next. There's a lot of great things about the new LEGO Ideas Viking Village set that fans would love to see in every single product release. 
So for a product that looks great on paper, it's also far from perfect. So let's talk about it. First, the minifigures. We get four different Vikings, most of which have exclusive prints, except for some torsos repurposed from the Creator 3-in-1 Viking ship set. We have the village chief with sword and shield, an archer with some cool war paintings in the face, a shield maiden with a different printed shield, with an airpiece I've never seen before, and the only minifigure out of the four with an alternate expression. Lastly, the blacksmith with the Mjolnir element that, to my knowledge, comes printed for the very first time ever. You get enough variety with these four minifigures, so if you can get your hands on some extras, there's lots of different combinations you can manage for some variety, which brings me to one of the downsides of this set. Can you see it when I display them in the village? For a set this size, 4 minifigures is too small a number and makes the village feel rather empty. I would say 6 might have been a better number, though the low minifigure count makes a difference when I tell you how much this costs, but before that, let's look at the main build. The village itself looks great in my opinion, there's 3 distinct areas that can actually be split into their own sections, which in turn makes carrying the build securely a bit risky, so bear that in mind. To the left there's the blacksmith, at the center the chieftain's longhouse, and to the right a watchtower. There's small hints of snow spread out across the model, but just enough for us to get some Nordic vibes out of it. Vegetation is bare, with a few leaves here and there, a very wimpy tree at the front, and another in the back, made with the relative relatively new fern elements turned upside down for a great building technique. Still in the back there's not a whole lot to look at except for a cave below the build that leads to the watchtower, supposedly the place where the blacksmith will go to get some ores. The smithy section has a printed stone slab with a longboat and a sea serpent, maybe a reference to the creator viking set, and the simple roof on the building can be taken off for a better look at all of the details inside. Side. Some weapons and tools on the barrel, a helmet and shield still unpainted, probably the reason the blacksmith has a paintbrush, an anvil and a bucket of water next to the forge's blower, which has a simple play feature to make the flames go bigger, so that the blacksmith can work the oars. The longhouse has cool detailing around the windows that's far easier to see if we remove the side sections. The front doors are entirely brick built, can open and feature some printed tiles at the top, same with the sides of the roof. It was an interesting build to get these angles and minimal piece usage was enough to give these both the snow looks as well as detached roof looks with the use of the grill elements in nougat. As the previous build, this roof can also be lifted so we have a better look at the interior details. Against the back wall there's the chief's chair and some banners, weapons and a shield on one side, a paper thin table on the other and at the center a fire pit. My favorite of this set's three sections has to be the watchtower one. I've already shown the cave below and above it there's this taller building with consistent coloring and details for the wooden roofs when compared to the previous two sections. The stone steps leading towards the door were great showcases of studs not on top lego techniques and the Harry Potter wand elements in black for the forge iron details on the door are great examples of nice parts usage. Again, another entirely brick built door that does open, but for an easier time to play inside, the whole back wall can be removed, revealing a pumpkin and cherries on a crate, and a leather element leading up to access the brick built rope bridge that connects to the simple yet clever watchtower for the archer to stand guard. I love the uneven shapes achieved with offsetting these tiles by just half a stud, and the flag and print the shield finish things off. I mentioned prints a couple times already during the review, but wait, there's more! Down here by these barrels that feature a similar styled sea serpent as seen before in the stone slab by the smithy. So on top of having exclusive minifigures, the viking village has no stickers whatsoever, but instead printed elements all around, an increasingly rare sighting with new lego releases. Prints, if
if you're not aware, are more expensive to produce when compared to sticker sheets, so that usually reflects on the final price. Considering that and the minifigures, plus the piece count of 2100 pieces, looking at these numbers alone and LEGO products overall pricing as of late, if this cost somewhere between $180 and $200, no one would be surprised, right? Well, surprisingly, it's lower. Care to take a guess? Some of you probably thought $150, but the LEGO Ideas Viking Village actually costs $130, which feels to me a surprisingly insane value for what you get out of this set. The creator longboat I mentioned a couple times already costs $10 less, but only has close to 1200 pieces. That's a 900 piece count difference for just 10 dollars. On paper it does feel like the perfect Lego set. Exclusive minifigures, prints, no stickers and amazing price. But as much as I like these aspects of the product and as much as I enjoyed building it, it feels way too niche to be a successful product for Lego in the long run. Nostalgia sells, otherwise Lego wouldn't venture on doing remakes and revivals of classic themes. But are Vikings really that nostalgic and popular? when compared to the likes of classic Lego themes like Pirates, Castle or Space? Check the Lion Knight's Castle review here to see what perfect Lego nostalgia on a box looks like or watch this video instead that the YouTube algorithm feels it's perfect for you. Tribute to Galileo Galilei is an upcoming gift with purchased LEGO set you'll be able to get for free on qualifying purchases from November 1st to the 16th, as reported by Jay's Brick Blog. Other tribute gift with purchase sets have been done in the past, namely Amelia Earhart tribute or Jane Goodall tribute, so it's kinda cool seeing more of these being done if you're into that kind of stuff. Galileo Galilei was a famous Italian astronomer born in the city of Pisa, as depicted in the sticker painting featuring the leaning Tower of Pisa, and there are a bunch of other references to his studies and experiments, but for now just a quick look at the minifigure that honestly does not look like someone dressed from the 16th century. Under the beard there's just a plain shirt print and a single print face minifigure head element. Despite the set being all about the man, I find his office to be a lot more interesting. There's three distinct wall sections placed at an angle, the previously mentioned one featuring the Leaning Tower of Pisa sticker painting, another wall with a bookshelf and some drawers, and then an open balcony of sorts from which he could use his telescope that allowed him to make a couple more scientific discoveries. Looking from the back, the balcony has some foliage, while the other two walls aren't as interesting, except for this gear here, but more on that later on. At the front of the display base slash room, another sticker with his name, a minifigure head with a globe pattern, and I'm just guessing here, but maybe a model of Saturn and one of its moons, referencing another of Galileo's discoveries. Would have been nice that the instruction booklet, as is the case with some Icons products, have a few words explaining what some of these builds mean. This extant Lego piece by the desk, for instance, doesn't make any sense, as it was a tool invented years after Galileo's passing. Though this illustration of the moon does have to do with his findings when pointing the telescope to the lunar surface, and at the center of the desk, a model of the Sun and planet Earth, a reference to Galileo's controversial writings defending heliocentrism, the concept that Earth and planets revolved around the Sun. And that's where that gear in the back comes in handy, making the model in the desk actually rotate. Not as impressive as the play feature on the Disney 100 Years of Celebration gift with purchase set, but still cool nonetheless. The set has 300 pieces and was a quick build, but not the greatest as a lot of time and pieces were spent building the black and dark grey base that had to be raised quite significantly due to the gear mechanism inside. It's something you kinda get for free when spending $130 that you could sell afterwards to get some money back, and pre-ordering the recently revealed Dune or Nitopter for instance will get you on the spending threshold. That Disney gift with purchase set I mentioned before was definitely worth it, and the ongoing promotion for Steamboat Willie that will be over by the end of the month as well. This one, despite being somewhat cool and effectively being a really good tribute to Galileo, doesn't feel as impressive of a Lego set in comparison to make me go out of my way to try and get it. 
The last major release of the year is the LEGO Ideas Orient Express, another set that turned out very differently from what the original Ideas submission was, but more on that later on. In this set you get a very plain looking train track base that does its job well. It isn't overly built like the Harry Potter Hogwarts Express one, so no unnecessary amount of budget was spent here, though I can't help but notice the rail pieces, so to speak, aren't lining up perfectly and actually bend up a little, making it so that the train doesn't ride smoothly on top of it. The measurements do match regular train track elements, so you could potentially run the Orient Express on your LEGO train tracks. It was designed so it can make the turns, but unfortunately LEGO didn't manage to make it motorizable, even though they've tried every combination possible of existing battery boxes and motors. The model with its two cars is simply too heavy. Onto the train itself you have the locomotive, the tender car, the dining car and the sleeping car that while looking very similar on the outside have major differences on the inside. Starting with the locomotive, my limited knowledge about trains lets me at least appreciate it for what it is, a clean looking model with seemingly all important details being featured there. The buffers, marker lights and iconic smoke box door, to the top the smoke stack made with a bucket element of sorts I don't think I've ever seen before, and behind it two steam domes in dark blue that while weirdly shaped aren't a new element but in fact a recolored minion head. Further back the whistles are recolored pen elements in pearl gold, there is however a new element, the silver coupling rods which should be very useful for train fans and in the back we can have a better look at the cab, filled with texture details and levers around the fire door. There's stickers in the set with one of them being a pair of 52s, a cool nod to Lego Ideas 52nd product release and Sapphire Star the name of the engine in brand with Emerald Knight, the creator expert train set name from 14 years ago. But the locomotive also features prints with 9 of these 1x4 curved slopes with a golden stripe going across it. When you place them all side by side though you kinda see the printing not being up to the highest LEGO standards, as some, if not most of the lines are actually bending and not perfectly straight, which is a big miss from quality control I think. I also noticed that when running the engine on tracks, whether the brick built ones provided with the set or the actual LEGO pre-molded ones, the driving wheel sometimes gets stuck and I can't for the life of me understand why. Pretty sure I built the model correctly and the pieces and axles are loose enough for unrestricted movement, so unless you're pushing the engine really hard against the surface, this will happen. The tender makes a great job of giving the impression of being stacked with coal, with the piece choices at the top. You can actually lift these, revealing a lot of empty space inside for maybe people try their hands at motorizing the old thing, as this here has plenty of space for LEGO battery boxes. There's fair amounts of detail front and back, the whole build was quite interesting with plenty of studs not on top techniques and the sliding middle wheel so that the tender can run on LEGO train track curves without the railing was kinda cool to figure out. The tender connects to the locomotive with this ball joint assembly like so, but now it's time to show the cars. They're very long with each one being slightly bigger than the locomotive and tender together. They are 8 studs wide which allows a lot more interior detail when compared to previous LEGO trains, and on the outside they look exactly the same, apart from a single printed element and a door featured on the back end of the restaurant car while every other passage is completely open. All doors have golden stickers, similar to the ones from the locomotive, but every other detail is actually printed. The car number printed brick being a reference to the set's product number, the Orient Express logo bricks, the voiture restaurant and the voiture lit bricks, and finally the tiles with the names of the cities where the train makes a stop are all written in their home country languages, supposedly. München, aka Munich in German, should have had the two 
dots above the U and then Bucharesti, aka Bucharest in Romanian, should actually have had the U instead of the A, which is very unfortunate. The wheels are on turntables so that the cars can handle curves and finally to access the interior we just need to remove the roof sections. This is the sleeping car with two rooms, the smallest having a bunk bed with a newspaper, a table with a backgammon board, the exact same one you can buy from the official Orient Express website and to the corner a sink with a sticker for a mirror. The way out of this room is super tight and to see inside these sections we have to peek through the doors to see some interesting details with these stickers representing a Lego fight version of the wood paneling the actual Orient Express cars have. The larger and more luxurious room has a matching bed with bedside lamps and a curved mirror above it, matching once again the real-life counterpart of the vehicle. There's also space for a couch, a fully equipped desk and further back a toilet complete with toilet sink and a few extras, but my favorite detail however is the pieces used for the tiled floor. The passage here is just as narrow and the wood panel outside the bedroom is exactly the same as the other one on the opposite side of the car. The highlight, as far as building techniques go, was in fact the window sections, built sideways with the use of a brand new bracket element that matches the pre-existing 2x2 version with a ton of the newer 3x3 window elements in pearl gold. Doing this four times wasn't fun, but the end result looks really really good. The restaurant car is accessed in the exact same way and features two dining tables ready to serve meals and a bar at the corner with a few bottles and items to prepare some beverages. There's another Lego fight version of a decorative piece of the train, another mirror behind the bottles of the bar, two more wood panels by the tables with Lego versions of Lego botanical elements and again we need to peek through the doors to be able to see these extra decorative stickers. The set wouldn't be complete without minifigures and any similarities between these and characters from Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express is pure coincidence as Lego doesn't own the rights. Eight minifigures in total with the staff including the train conductor, the train driver, the railway station manager and the waiter. On the passenger side of things there's a writer, a scientist, a duchess and a film director referencing the fan designer of the set who is also a film director. On top of the handheld items everyone has there's also this luggage cart with a box containing a few coins and a chest with two crystals and a fossilized mosquito. Don't really get it but I'm all for dinosaur movie references. I can't really deny it, the model actually looks beautiful, but when compared to the idea submission there's clear differences, namely the dark green engine. Since LEGO was handling this with an IP partner that means there's a lot more stakeholders having a say about a model such as these and what eventually was decided was that the focus should be on the luxurious aspect of traveling with the Orient Express, meaning the car number went from the single 1 to 2 in the final model and that the engine, that throughout the years changed many times and was never a specific model, changed from being the French Pacific steam locomotive to be turned into a generic dark blue steam locomotive, matching the iconic dark blue color scheme of the actual Orient Express cars. So train fans hoping for a highly specific and detailed locomotive got a simple and generic engine instead, so understandably have reasons to be unhappy. But at the end of the day that's what working with LEGO ideas and IP partners means for the product. Compromises need to be made so that all stakeholders are happy with the outcome. I'm not a train guy so I'm not too bothered with the changes, but the quality control on this one is concerning. The misaligned printed curve slope are an issue, the wheels getting stuck or the misspelled city names are far bigger problems in my eyes, not to mention the price that at $300 for a little over 2500 pieces feels a bit too much and not the types of deals we usually see from LEGO Ideas products. I'd wait for a discount if I were you, it's great but not that amazing of a model, though for train fans there's really not a whole lot of options in the port 
portfolio. So this feels to me like the best looking one currently in production. It will be available for purchase in just a few days on December 1st, so you can use the links below to support the channel if you wish to buy it day one. But for that amount of money, I would probably buy into the other December 1st release, the Natural History Museum. Completely different products, I know, but far better value on the modular, hands down.